Being able to draw an action potential in an exam is vital because it's a very common question. Uh, but to understand this, you have to understand that um, neurons are bound by a membrane, a lipoprotein membrane, and it has a resting potential across the membrane of approximately 70 millivolts. And this resting membrane potential is um, maintained at rest by various ways. First of all, there is an active ATP-driven sodium potassium pump, and it pumps three sodium ions out of the cell for every two potassium ions into the cell. Um, the, the second way is that the, the membrane has selective permeability to uh, different ions, namely it has a hundred times uh, uh, more uh, selective to potassium ions being uh, permeable to potassium ions compared to sodium ions. Um, this means that you get a net selective cation efflux out of the cell, maintaining the negative resting potential. The third thing to understand is that of the Donnan equilibrium or the Donnan effect. Now this uh, effect refers to the relative colloid osmotic pressure exerted by larger impermeable molecules, which are proteins, which act across this lipoprotein membrane. And the distribution of these permeable ions, the potassium and the sodium, uh, will alter in attempt to restore this osmotic equilibrium. And this also contributes to the negative resting membrane potential. So this is how the resting membrane potential is maintained. So if we were to draw the action potential, we have the membrane potential on the y-axis, which is measured in millivolts. And we know that this uh, is the resting membrane potential, minus 70. So I'll just put this in here. And we know that we need to achieve approximately minus 55 millivolts to, uh, to achieve the gate threshold potential. So this is the threshold potential to allow an action potential to propagate. The next thing to mark is, is zero millivolts and then plus 30 millivolts is where the action potential reaches its highest point when the sodium uh, ions, uh, the sodium gated channels open and, um, and I'll mark this in later. So if we, if we just mark the, thresh, uh, the threshold resting potential here at minus 55, so what happens at rest, it's usually around minus 70. Then you have a, a stimulus uh, which will cause uh, a, a blip in the, in the resting membrane potential. Now this stimulus can be a mechanical stimulus or it can be a summation of multiple smaller stimuli to achieve the threshold stimulus or usually it's as a result of binding of neurotransmitters on the postsynaptic membrane. So either one of these stimuli can cause the, um, the, th the the threshold to, uh, to to cause a action potential. So here, if you see, if there's a, if there is a stimulus which acts below the threshold, an action potential won't propagate. However, if you do eventually get a big enough stimulus, then you get a sudden opening of the voltage gated sodium channels, and an action potential will 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 ensue. When you get the opening of the sodium gated uh, uh, channels, you get a massive uh, influx of sodium and therefore you have a sudden rise uh, in, in the positivity of the membrane potential, um, which, is, which is your depolarization here. This takes approximately one millisecond. So this is time on the, on the x-axis and this is measured in milliseconds. So the, 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 the difference between when the actual threshold happens and when the sodium uh, channels actually shut up here, that occurs 
in approximately one millisecond. So at this point, when the sodium channels close, the at the same time, the potassium channels open. Um, so when the potassium channels open, you get um, a massive efflux of potassium. When you have, uh, so this is potassium efflux, and we know here that's sodium uh, influx. So when you have potassium efflux, you get a very rapid repolarization of the, of the membrane potential. However, because there's a delay in the closing of the potassium channels, it actually hyper repolarizes and then they finally shut down here. And when they finally shut down here, you then have all these effects here, which normally maintain the resting membrane potential working before it gradually restores itself to its resting membrane potential at minus 70 millivolts. So this is hyper repolarization due to the delay in the sodium uh, in the potassium channels um, closing uh, and uh, this is repolarization the last thing to mention is that when the sodium channels close up here there is a refractory period which limits the uh, number of stimuli that the neuron can actually respond to and therefore limits the number of action potentials uh, that, that can happen. And this refractory period usually lasts a couple of milliseconds and there's an absolute refractory period and then follows a relative refractory period. Another question the examiner may ask is how do local anaesthetics work? And local anaesthetics um, work at the sodium channels. And what they do is they, they block the propagation and initiation of action potentials by physically plugging these sodium channels. So it prevents sodium influx and therefore prevents uh, the depolarization of the um, action potential.